Hey! What's up, this is Culture Detective here, investigating your favorite albums, and today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Quadeca album, I Didn't Mean to Haunt You. So, YouTuber, producer, rapper, Quadeca, aka Benjamin Lasky, has dropped a new album, I Didn't Mean to Haunt You. And I've been meaning to review this album for like two weeks now, but of course, I couldn't do it because I was just too damn busy lately and I will be just as busy in the following few weeks as I was and I am right now so uh, I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible but uh yeah this seems to be an anomaly because usually youtuber music sucks ass and usually uh youtubers even if it's not music even if it's something else like if a youtuber decides to make a movie or a short film it usually sucks ass but this is an anomaly because somehow a YouTuber has dropped a good album. And this is I Didn't Mean to Haunt You and a lot of people has been really hyped up for this album. And um, I've listened to it and wow, it is truly astonishing. It is truly astonishing. So before I didn't mean to haunt you, Quadeca also released an album called From Me to You, which I didn't review because I didn't really listen to all that much but it's uh it is kind of interesting he blends hip-hop with several other genres here and there and there are some quirky moments of production here and there but it totally is not the grand ambitious emo sonic wonderland that is i didn't mean to haunt you where essentially on this album Quadeca abandons hip-hop for the most part but still retains some of it but mostly on this album we have emo folk folktronica lo-fi ambient pop bits of art pop here and there it's a really interesting blend of sounds and the production is even more experimental and surreal on this album than anything that he has ever done um so um yeah I, I, I just remembered that, oh yeah, you know, he's the same guy who made a diss track against KSI. But, uh, yeah, here we go. The album opener, Sorry for, Sorry for Dying, has the glossy keyboards. That sounds like it came out of the Interstellar soundtrack. We have the melodramatic rising horns. We have beautiful verses where bits of hip-hop and R&B are combined. And then that is followed with ambient passages. It's a very sonically interesting opener with layers upon layers upon layers of instrumentals. It is a little bit messy, but I think it is an amazing tone setter for the rest of the album. This second track, Tell Me a Joke, is amazing. It is a gentle ballad in 3-4 with the glitching keyboards, the chopped up instrumentals, and the very compressed vocals. There's also a lot of love for the Beatles' revolver on this album and on this track in particular. And we also have some very intensely emo lyrics. This track basically takes all the crazy, messy instrumentals and combine them and arrange them in a very coherent way. Not, not a very coherent way, but in a way it really makes up a complete song and it sounds fantastic. Afterwards, we have Don't Mind Me, which is a really ambient-oriented track with the buzzing keyboards and glitchy, choppy uh, embellishments. It is, however, a little bit too loose and a little bit too messy. I can pretty much say the same thing for the next track, Picking Up Hands, which are a bit too overwhelming. The instrumentals, the embellishments are a bit too loud and noisy, and the vocals feel limited. I do really like the forlorn guitars underneath the track, but they're not accentuated enough. Afterwards, we have Born Yesterday, and that's easily my favorite track on the entire album, and I'm sure this is the favorite track of many other people as well on this album. It's amazing. I love the gorgeous running guitars, the noisy sound effects, the twittering electronics, the emotional harmonies, and the rising instrumentals in the middle of the track really build up in such a powerful way. And I just think the, the performances are actually pretty damn good. I was born yesterday. Oh, it's just... You can really feel the emotions. And afterwards, we have the Memories We Lost in Translation, which is almost an extension of the previous track. This track is more instrumentally dense than the last one, and it is gorgeously haunting and enveloping. Afterwards, we have House Settling, which starts off with some really sad and dejected singing, then transitions into some 
horror pianos that are very experimental and then lo and behold we have none other than Danny freaking Brown featured on this track and his feature is great. He provides some really great lyrical addendum to the track. Not sees Quedeca return to hip hop a bit more except the production is this weird electronic post-punk flavored beat and it's glitchy and noisy and industrial and it's a lot of fun and that is harshly contrasted with the very stripped back and emotional fantasy world which is a seven minute long piano ballad with droney bass and a very beautiful elegant piano build up in the middle which reaches euphoric heights and i also really like the existential lyrics on the track the next track fraction of reality feature um, none other than sunday service choir the choir that accompanied kanye west a lot but yeah, I love the bittersweet chords. I love how echoey and degraded it is. And Quadeca even manages to sneak in a verse of rap at the very end, which blends in very, very well. The album ends off with Cassini's Division, which features Thor Harris, the drummer of Swans. Wow. Um, it has the very interesting ghostly screams. Though the lyrics are a bit awkward, especially with the pitched vocals, it does come off a little bit too, um, too on the nose. Uh, and the instrumentals in the second half is a little messy when it was fading out and we hear some crying and weeping. And then it just transitions into static noise, which is nice. I think it thematically fits. But overall, I wouldn't say it's a very strong ending. So uh, yeah, this is a very good album. Quadeca really dropped something awesome here. And um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's one of the best of the year. I still think there are a lot of room for improvement, but I still think it is um, incredible that uh, a YouTuber would drop an album uh, this good, this well-made, uh, this bold, this conceptual, and, and this artistic. Like it doesn't feel like a YouTuber album, you know? It actually feels like something underground from Bandcamp. Uh, and, and something that's like everyone on radio music is really hyped about which is true it is something on radio music that everyone's hyped about so um yeah seven out of ten strong seven so have you listened to the new quadeca album for one to ten how much you rate it like it like it and subscribe you want more and thanks for watching i will be reviewing wise blood richard dawson nas young blood and mgmt